Okay, so a combing will now need to be installed along the quarter deck bulkhead. This piece will need to be bent a bit in order to conform to the curvature of the deck. For this model, a 3 inch strip of 16th of an inch by 16th of an inch basswood was used. The only real trick is to keep shaving off the sides of the strip until the strip fits snugly between the sides and against the quarter deck bulkhead. When the piece fits perfectly in all respects, it can then be painted or stained. When the paint or stain is dry, run a very thin bead of glue, perhaps applied to the toothpick, along the seam where the combing will be seated. Press the combing into place and quickly wipe away the excess glue. This picture shows an X-Acto blade getting ready to be used to scrape the excess glue from the top of the piece. If you have gaps anywhere, the glue at this small scale is very good at disguising those gaps. The best way to wipe off the final remnants of glue is with a wet piece of thin cloth. Now that the cabin molding has been installed, it's time to install the ladder and cabin door. This diagram shows the profile of the ladder in red. You'll need to cut two eighth of an inch by sixteenth of an inch basswood strips to length at the approximate angles shown to form the size of the ladder. The trick with this ladder is that it will be located at the side of the deck, so a side will be just a touch longer than the other side to account for the curvature of the deck. When the sides have been cut to fit, the ladder rungs can be cut from an eighth of an inch by sixteenth of an inch basswood strip. These should be around three-eighths of an inch long. You'll find out very quickly that each rung needs to be exactly the same length as its counterparts when you glue together the ladder. Refer to the diagram below for placement of the ladder rungs. Note how the edges extend behind and in front of the ladder. This is fine. Once the glue is set, each side of the ladder may be sanded, leaving perfect steps. Depending on the curvature of your ladder, you may have either three or four rungs. One of the common aspects of scratch building is that a modeler may make the same piece three or four times before they have a piece which fits correctly or has the correct look. Don't be discouraged if you aren't a fan of your first ladder or even your second. Simply make another one. When you have a ladder which you are satisfied with, it may be painted or stained and glued onto your model. This photo shows the ladder installed as well as the cabin door which we'll attack next. Glue together four strips of planking and cut to fit resting on top of the cabin combing, yet roughly a sixteenth of an inch below the quarter deck planking. Don't glue this in yet. Now, cut a section of 16th of an inch basswood strip and rest it on top of the door you just cut out. What we've just created is the look of a closed sliding wooden panel door. Sand the top of the door if necessary until you achieve a nice looking door and rails. The upper rail should be approximately a touch longer than, the, than double the width of the door. When the pieces can be held in place and they look correct, proceed to stain or paint them and glue them into position. The next piece to be installed is a cover for a simulated cargo hold. View the pictures here. The two large pieces are cargo hold covers. You'll only need one for your prototype. It can be cut from any type of material you wish and should be approximately an inch wide and a little over one and a quarter inches long. In order to simulate a double door, scribe a shallow line with your X-Acto blade directly down the center line of the piece. Extend the cut down both sides as well, and then apply the paint or stain of your choice. Now place your cargo hold doors approximately half of an inch in front of your main mast hole. This photograph shows the build in a ladder stage indicating the position of the cargo doors as well as the combing around the doors which we'll create next. So using strips of sixteenth of an inch by sixteenth of an inch strip basswood, create a box around the edges of your cargo doors. You'll have to be fairly exact with your X-Acto knife in order to cut the pieces to the correct size. This will take a little trial and error, which is normal. 
When your pieces fit snugly against the cargo doors on all sides, they can then be stained or painted and then glued into place when dry. Use the same glue removal technique which was discussed when installing the combing against the cabin bulkhead. The cargo doors will now need handles. You can create handles out of smaller pieces of the 16th of an inch by 16th of an inch wood which was used for the combing or you can create handles as shown in this photo. This photo illustrates how the cargo door handles are made. After the wire was bent to shape, it was cut with pliers to a uniform length and then glued into holes made by a small pin vise drill.